Hey everyone, I'm Big John and welcome to another episode of the Diz Ability Show. This week I want to talk to you about something that we always talk about here on the channel, but which I think is probably the most important tip that we do talk about here on the channel, and that is the Disability Pass or DAS Pass system. Now, as I said in in one of of the past week's videos that I have uploaded, the pass is pretty much the same at both Disneyland and Walt Disney World. Now, what you do is you go to the info center in, any, in front of any of the four parks or City Hall if you're going to either Disneyland Park or Magic Kingdom. And you talk to the cast member and tell them, hey, I have autism and I'd like to get my disability pass, or at least that's what I say, because everyone has a different disability or the same disability, but with a different standard. So they will scan your magic band as well as the bands of everyone else in your party. I right, then you, and then you're good to go for your whole trip. Now, how it works is you go, there are two options. The first is go up to a ride and ask a cast member if, if you can get a return time. They will, will scan your magic band with, with an iPad And, and, and they will give you a return time. The second option is you can do all that through either the My Disney Experience app or the Disneyland app, depending on where you are. Then you can enjoy, enjoy the, the park. And then when your ride time rolls around, go over and scan your Magic Band. Now, it will start out blue, but then the cast member will give you a thumbs up, and then they'll, they'll say you're good to go. That way, you don't have to handle all the, the, the pressure of the five and a half hour long lines in the middle of the day. So anyway, that's my tip. As always, if you have any questions on how to do Disney for people with disabilities, let me know in the comments. I'll make sure it gets to a future episode. And now it's time for this week's top five. So Disneyland has amazing rides. So amazing that Disney doesn't even bother to bring them to Florida because they are what make Disneyland unique. So this week, we're going to cover my top five Disneyland exclusive rides. All right, number five, uh, Radiator Springs Racers at Disney's California Adventure. Now, this is kind of like California's version of Test Track, but instead of one car or racing through the track, there are two cars. And it has banked turns, it has hills, and, and of course, some great characters from the movies. And if you haven't seen our video of that, it, scroll down. All right, number four, Roger Rabbit's Cartoon Spin. Now, this, this ride pretty much describes Toontown at Disneyland. Because Toontown is, is loosely based... It, it, Toontown was inspired by, of course, the Roger Rabbit movie. And, and as well as many great years of great Disney cartoons. So I think Roger Rabbit is Toontown, even though Roger Rabbit, the character, hasn't been seen at Disneyland in years. I wish he was, but it's still a great ride. It it does it reminds me of how much I love the movie. And it it, it it's a fun ride. It is. You actually get to spin the cab, and it's cool. We'll have a video of that coming up in the near future. Number three, Alice in Wonderland. Now, I'm not talking about the teacups here. I am talking about a an actual Alice in Wonderland dark ride that is right next to the canopyless teacups at Disneyland. Or gazebo-less teacups at Disneyland, I should say. Uh, you you board a caterpillar, and you enter Wonderland, and it has all these projected scenes and and all these great figures, animatronics, and stuff. And during one scene, you are actually uh, riding a over the ground of Fantasyland, and and 
and it's cool. It, it It's very cool to see, to looking over your head and say, oh, take a look at that caterpillar with guests on it. it it's really fun. It, it's a cute ride. Number two, Mr. Toad's Wild Ride. Now, when I say this one's Disneyland exclusive, I mean, it used to be at Walt Disney World when it first opened. Then when it was announced that, hey, we're getting rid of Toad here in Florida and we're going to put in Winnie the Pooh, people were ticked. But... But still, Mr. Toad is a great ride at Disneyland. And, and it's one of those few places where you go to, um, I don't want to say it because this is a family channel, you go to, uh, as my high school case manager used to call it, H-E double hockey stick. <laughs> Alright, so, but yeah, it's a fun ride. It's a classic Disneyland ride, and and it, it's one of those people that remind, it's one of those rides that reminds people that yes, there was a Mr. Toad movie, Wind of the Willows, part of the adventures of Mr. Toad and Nicobar Crane. Watch it, it's on Disney+. Plus. And now my number one favorite Disneyland exclusive ride, the Matterhorn. Of course, Disneyland's first thrill ride and the first roller coaster that has steel tubular tracking. I rode it back in 2009. Unfortunately, I was not able to ride the Matterhorn because right now, because it was still under refurbishment and it is still under refurbishment right now. And it is to reopen on June 3rd, breaking my heart. I would have loved, because I haven't seen for myself the, the new version of the Yeti that they, that they debuted on the ride for Disneyland's uh, 60th back in 2015. But it's a fun ride. It has these banked turns and that lake rush of water acting as a braking system. And it, it's fun. It's it's fun. The, uh, the OG Disneyland Mountain. So anyway, let me know in the comments what your favorite Disneyland exclusive ride is. And now it is time for Diz or Dat. Who doesn't love a wild mouse coaster? On one side, you have Primeval Whirl, which used to be my favorite ride at Animal Kingdom before it closed. It had some trouble back in 2019, and it, it was having some bit of a trouble. And it hadn't it didn't even reopen with Animal Kingdom when the parks reopened from COVID. In fact, they announced that Primeval Whirl. It did not coming back, but I, which really cut me to the core because I know a lot of people have opinions about Primeval World, but I loved it. I used to write it twice in a row and they would say, and they would let me stay on board. And we used to write it in the mornings because everyone else was at Everest. <laughs> I miss it so much, but I hope they do something good to Dino Land maybe Zootopia like they announced like they they kind of teased at D23 not confirmed just just a what if idea i hope it comes to fruition maybe we'll find out at destination D this september now on the other side you have Goofy's Sky School formerly known as Mahal and Madness now that's the uh Wild Mouse Coaster at Disney's California Adventure. And it's pretty much the same ride as Primeval World, except the coaster doesn't spin. So, let me know in the comments which you prefer. Diz, Primeval World, or Dat, Goofy Sky School. All right. Now, I'll admit, I would... I was I have not been one of the in, lucky individuals to experience the Star Wars Galactic Star Cruiser and at this point it's safe to say get, I never will because Disney has announced that the Star Wars Galactic Star Cruiser will be closing permanently at the end of September 
Now, this, now, I'm surprised, but at the same time, I'm not. Because, I, I mean, Disney created this amazing, immersive experience. But, they charge too much for it. I mean, 90 bucks for a person? Really? And... But the the best thing about, from what I've seen from pictures and videos, the best part of the Galactic Star Cruiser was not the hotel. It's not your uh, four and a half hours in, in Galaxy's Edge. It, it's not the food. It, it's the cast. The entertainers that play roles in the Star Cruiser each and every voyage. Some of them I know very well. Because some of them are former citizens of Hollywood. I. My heart goes out to the cast of the Galactic Star Cruiser. I just hope that once this adventure of a lifetime ends for them. They'll find something else in the parks. Because Disney is nothing without its entertainment. I've said this millions of times. People don't just go for the rides. They just come for the cast, the entertainers. And that's what brings me back every single time. And I have, and I'll be honest, I have made lifelong friendships with, with some of those cast members. And I just hope they do something with that, with that building once the Star Cruiser is no more. And and hopefully it'll be something, they'll do something good with it. And hopefully that something good will cost less money. But that's just me. So anyway, that's our show. As always, if you have any questions on how to do Disney for people with disabilities, let me know in the comments. I'll make sure it gets to a future episode. For this week's shoutouts, make sure you guys check out Jessica and Lewis over at One Little Spark. JL. They do great live streams and vlogs from the parks all the time. Make sure you check them out. Also, make sure you guys check out the Tim Tracker, the Chuck Norris of vlogging, as I call him. He does, he boasts out vlogs from both the parks and his family life each and every day. Definitely check him out. Also, make sure you guys check out uh, Pete Carney over at Adventures by Carney. He does amazing live streams from the parks as well. Make sure you check him out. Also, make sure you guys check out Maria over at LBV TV. She does great vlogs and live streams from the parks as well. She is amazing. I was this close to seeing her in person at Disneyland. But definitely check her out as well. For the latest Disney news and gossip, make sure you guys check out WW Magazine. If you haven't subscribed here yet to the Big John Network, what in the Walt Disney World are you waiting for? And ding the bell for notifications so you never miss a second of the fun. And until next time, may the mouse be with you.